let us uh, start lecture 36 and the course is corrosion protection methods and we will continue our discussion on uh, this broad topic which is uh, change in electrode potential and associated corrosion protection. The last lecture we actually discussed the differences between anodic protection and cathodic protection. In fact, we also discussed about uh, 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 the kind of uh, initial uh, spike in the current requirement uh, for anodic protection and then uh, uh, later it reduces to a great extent. So, that initial spike in the current value, so if we have some data uh, then it will be very easy to uh, appreciate, is not it? So, let us look at that part and then we will try to see the differences between uh, uh, cathodic protections, the two things that is one is ICCP, another one is sacrificial anode, we will see some of the differences. And then uh, uh, we will try to find out some calculations that what would be the current output if we talk about uh, uh, magnesium anodes or zinc anodes and then we can also try to look at what could be the uh, number of electrodes or number of uh, anodes that will be required for effective uh, protection to the cathode in case of sacrificial anode uh, situation. Okay. So, let us look at uh, some of the uh, spikes in the current and then uh, the sudden decrease in the current density once uh, uh, E protection that the protection potential which is corresponding to uh, the, the passive range then uh, we will see that the current requirement would be really, really low. Okay. So, now uh, let us look at those values, some of the values. So, if we consider that goes to the throwing power. So, for anodic protection, so we will talk about anodic protection. Let us uh, talk about some data for austenitic stainless steel, austenitic SS and this is nothing but 304, which is nothing but around 18 percent chromium and 8 percent nickel, that is the range and at 30 degree. So, I am taking some data from the book uh, Corrosion Engineering by Fontana and Green, fine. So, it says that we can have a sense that what could be the, uh, the, uh, the corrosion rate that we can experience when it is unprotected and when it is protected, okay. So, that gives us some idea. So, uh, let us say uh, if it is solution this is let us say solution or electrolyte and let us say the corrosion rate here. Now, when it is not protected and when it is anodically protected. Now, if we talk about uh, one normal HSO4 and this is at 30 degrees Celsius plus 10 to the power minus 5 molar NaCl when it is unprotected that means uh, if we talk about uh, the plot So, let us say this is my protection potential initially this is my I core which is like unprotected system I unprotected. Now, once it uh, reaches to this level I can say this is protected. 
that is the difference between not protected and uh, uh, this is uh, let us say this is anodically protected. So, this is anodically protected and this is unprotected or non-protected, not protected. Now, that time its corrosion rate is uh, uh, this corrosion rate is basically MPY uh, 14 and here it is 0 0.0. So, now you can sense that what is the degree of decrease in corrosion rate once we go to uh, anodic protection. Now, one more example we can cite like 10 normal H2SO4 increasing the strength of it and also increasing the uh, molar percentage of molar molarity of uh, molarity of NaCl 10 to the minus 3 mole. NaCl, interesting is uh, the unprotected situation, it will be huge corrosion rate, but when it is protected, that time corrosion rate boils down to 0 0.04 MPY. You can convert this MPY to millimeter per year. So, uh, generally when we talk about MPY in terms of if we know current density, I core, that multiply with uh, uh, atomic weight, this is atomic weight or let me put it in term with units. I core which is ampere per centimeter square let us say into which is atomic number in terms of gram. Then I can put uh, N F rho. Okay. So, this is N is basically the for example, if we consider M is the metal which is dissolving and any electron which is uh, taken out uh, to dissolve one mole of one one uh, atom one metal ion. Okay, so that time uh, this N is considered here. So that means for dissolving one mole of uh, metal, we need NF number of electrons. Uh, NF num N NF would be the charge, not uh, uh, not that uh, NF no N number. So N into Avogadro number that will be the number of uh, electrons would be required. For dissolving one mole of M. So, and uh, we know one mole of one Avogadro number or one mole of electron is equivalent to 1 Faraday uh, charge, which is nothing but uh, 96500 Coulomb. Okay. And the rho is uh, in terms of, uh, so F is in Coulomb into rho, which is density gram per centimeter Q, let us say. So, these is I think a general corrosion rate expression when we know this value. Now, this can be mentioned in terms of milli inch per year. This can be also mentioned in terms of millimeter per year. Okay. And that relation uh, we can indicate that relation. So, we can convert uh, uh, this uh, particular corrosion rate in terms of milli inch per year, which is nothing but MPY or millimeter per year. Only thing is this uh, distance uh, uh, unit uh, should be converted into milli inch or millimeter. Now, uh, if we talk about 1 milli inch or mils per year, per year it can be written in terms of uh, 0 0.025 millimeter per year. Okay. So, this is a conversion uh, you can do it uh, by putting all those conversion you can get this. So, now uh, you can now uh, coming to the part that uh, uh, the kind of improvement in corrosion resistance or enhancement in corrosion resistance, what you uh, sense when it is unprotected 
and when it is protected. So that is uh, uh, pretty uh, good actually and uh, it uh, uh, so that means and interestingly when you talk about these values, these protected values, it will be almost close to y, uh, IP. We will see that that data, you couple of data will just show and then we will show that that particular uh, actually this particular anodic protected uh, corrosion rate is almost equal to uh, uh, the corrosion rate what you can calculate by putting IP in place of ICOR. Okay. Now, if we talk about uh, current requirement, in case of anodic protection, uh, let us say if we talk about uh, fluid and this is also data is taken from uh, the book corrosion engineering by Fontana and Green. So, this if we talk about fluid uh, and concentration, then if we talk about temperature. So, this temperature is uh, mentioned in terms of Fahrenheit, okay. then metal current density, the maximum current density required to passive it. And of course, uh, uh, to maintain, if we talk about this is uh, to passive it. and current density which is needed to maintain uh, that metal in that protection zone as we have shown here. So, we have to maintain that particular metal within this zone within this zone if we maintain then definitely we can get a very low uh, current density. Now, if we talk about couple of examples we can uh, give uh, like uh, if we consider H2SO4 1 molar H2SO4 temperature around 75 degrees Fahrenheit uh, metal is 316 SS. So, that means it contains uh, molybdenum along with chromium and nickel. Uh, to passive it we need around 2100 and here the current density it is mentioned in terms of milli ampere per feet square. Okay, you can convert in terms of uh, micro ampere per meter square or ampere per centimeter square. You have to just uh, convert uh, those units into uh, the, the, the distance unit or the length unit is to be converted in to, into meter or centimeter, then you will get that. But uh, this value is uh, uh, very high uh, when you consider this uh, 2100 milliampere per feet square. To maintain it needs hardly 11 milliampere per feet square. So, you can sense that the amount of current required to maintain at E protection is very, very low. Then we can think about one example like uh, let us say 45 percent H2SO4 and when you talk about uh, temperature, if we increase temperature most of the time corrosion rate increases. Now, uh, this is in case of uh, 304 which is uh, austenitic stainless steel 18 chrome and 8 nickel. So, that time the current value that is required for passivation the maximum current that will be needed is 165000 milliampere per feet square. It is a huge amount of current. Now, once it reaches to E protection that value goes to 830 which is uh, very low compared to this. 
Now, uh, let us talk about some other uh, acids or let us say base, let us consider one base, uh, let us say NaOH and let us talk about 20 percent NaOH, temperature is 75 degree Fahrenheit and we are talking about 304 SS, these are all stainless steel. So, there uh, the current requirement initially for taking it to the protection zone is around 4400 uh, milliampere per feet square. Now, once it reaches to E, -prot, e protection, then it will be around 9.4 milliampere per feet square. So, there are a lot many data in that book, you can look into it, but what we would like to say that that the current requirement drops drastically once it reaches to the passive range. And interestingly, this current value is almost equal to I passive, I passive or I p. Now, what is I p in this particular diagram? I p is basically this and now why it becomes equal to I p? So, this difference is basically I applied and here in this particular this uh, value what we are talking about this is nothing but I applied ok. That means, I applied means I A minus I C and in this very diagram this indicates I C, this indicates I A and since it has gone to anodic polarization segment, so, so that means we are going from this to this, we are taking it towards positive direction, the potential. So, here I P is on the right, so I P, I applied would be equal to I A minus I C and since I C has a negative uh, uh, sign, so that is what we are taking it as a mod only magnitude we are considering. Now, I C is so low, so let us say I A is around 11 milliampere per feet square and let us say this I C value is let us say uh, this is I A, I C value let us say 10 to the power minus 5 milliampere per feet square. So, this value would not uh, influence the difference ok, but the difference would be uh, uh, this particular current density which is I C could be insignificant compared to I A. So, that is what I applied is actually equal to I P, that is what I was trying to uh, indicate. So, this is about uh, uh, anodic polarization some of the characteristics and also uh, it is it's, it's very direct measurement of corrosion rate. Okay, or the protection. In case of cathodic protection, we simply say that this is the potential minus 850 millivolt criteria with respect to copper copper sulphate, the NASA criteria that if the potential or the polarization potential of the metal or the steel in soil goes below uh, minus 850, that means it is it should not go up. So, it should not be like minus 750 millivolt, millivolt uh, with respect to copper copper sulphate, then it will not get proper protection. But if it goes around let us say minus uh, 900 millivolt with respect to copper copper sulphate, definitely it will have a lot of protection because that is actually taking the potential far below the uh, open circuit potential of iron uh, in that particular electrolyte. So, that is the uh, point we say with respect to polarization we talk about and we empirically say that if we send this much of current, then uh, let us say we give some amount of current where uh, current uh, current output which is going towards steel in case of sacrificial anode or in case of ICCP. So, then we say that it gets sufficient protection, but it does not indicate the direct corrosion protection or direct corrosion rate what that material would experience or the steel would experience during protection. But in case of anodic protection, it is very direct. That means, we know what could be my corrosion rate when it has uh, reached to the protection point. 
Now, uh, we can talk about uh, uh, some differences uh, between uh, cathodic and anodic polar okay, difference between ICCP and uh, let us talk uh, about uh, differences between uh, two modes of protection uh, in case of uh, cathodic protection. So, we have two modes like ICCP and uh, sacrificial anode. See if we try to look at those uh, uh, differences, we can just pinpoint those differences, some of the differences uh, and it will be, uh, but from the design aspects only we can say that there are, uh, the one difference is, uh, is uh, in one case we need external power source and another case we need uh, no external power source, but there are some other differences. So, let us talk about that. Differences ICCP and sacrificial anode. Now, if we talk about that in this case external power source. But here we do not need no external power source. Of course, in this case it has to be DC. Uh, this will be little cost, little, little, uh, little uh, uh, costlier than sacrificial anode mechanism or we can simply say costlier. and this is cheap. Third is uh, here it is uh, very easy to install, easy installation or easy setup. This is complicated compared to sacrificial anode. Now, if we consider another difference uh, here we know that stray current problem is little less, but here stray current problem more problematic, more problem. It means here uh, the field would be much more uh, heavy than compared to sacrificial anode gas. Now, uh, one important aspect is here driving potential is fixed. For example, if we consider minus 850 millivolt criteria with copper, copper sulphate electrode, let us say this is my steel potential under polarized condition and we know uh, for zinc which is the anode that potential would be 1.1 1 .1 or 1100 millivolt with respect to copper, copper sulphate under OCP condition. So, then uh, the driving potential would be 1100 minus 850, so which is close to around uh, 250 millivolt, fine. So, this is fixed once we fix the zinc, but here we can actually have uh, driving potential can be varied. In fact, in this case, in case of ICCP, let us say uh, oh, we, uh, we can actually increase the uh, DC power source uh, uh, rating or we can actually operate at a low value. It depends uh, is a variable uh, DC power source we can employ and that can actually uh, enable us to control the potential requirement or the current requirement. Uh, during different seasons or if the soil resistivity changes, then we can definitely control by changing this driving potential which is controlled by the 
the external power source, uh, uh, power source which can be variable. Now, these are some of the uh, aspects of course, on the economic, uh, uh, these are some of the differences between ICCP and sacrificial anode. Okay. So, now uh, finally, it comes to uh, uh, some of the calculations uh, like current requirement or current output when we use uh, magnesium or when we use uh, zinc as well as uh, we can also calculate uh, uh, the number of anodes that will be required. And then we can also calculate what could be the weight of anodes that will be required and how long uh, that could give uh, protection uh, number of years. So, those calculations uh, we can do and that we can take up in our next lecture. At the same time, we will also talk about the characteristics of uh, different anodes uh, like uh, auxiliary anode and then uh, uh, in case of uh, sacrificial anode, we can talk of, uh, we can, we can think, we can, we can discuss uh, uh, the compositions as well as why those uh, modification in composition is required. The, what's, uh, why, why the modification in composition of those anodes uh, uh, that is required, uh, we will we'll start discuss in our next lecture. Uh, till then, uh, thank you.